Welcome back to the channel. My name is Derek, and in today's video, we are gonna show you guys how to set up the Beacon Mix Create inside both Windows as well as OBS, and some cool things you can do with it that you might not be aware of. Let's go ahead and roll the intro and jump right into it. guys as I said you can see here we got the beacon software open up on the computer opened up on the computer and uh, we're gonna be showing you guys how to set everything up both inside Windows inside the beacon software as well as inside of OBS this would also work for Streamlabs OBS or whatever program you use now you might be saying well Derek a lot of these tutorials on how to set up the beacon mix great already exist on YouTube so why are you making one well because most of those tutorials were made when the beacon mix create first came out and there has been a lot of improvements to the software as well as some new features added that I thought might be useful to you guys. You know, things look different, things are different. And so I thought an updated how to set it up and I needed to redo everything on my computer anyways. So figured now was the perfect opportunity. If this video helps you out, if you enjoy it, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more streaming help videos, reviews of streaming equipment. I would really appreciate it. Also, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, leave a comment down below. And if you don't have one, say hello in the comments below or leave an emoji or something. It helps with engagement on the video, which helps me out tremendously and I'd appreciate it. All right. With that said, let's go ahead and jump in. When you first install the Beacon Mix Create, this is what you're gonna see when the software first opens up for you. You're gonna be presented with the Beacon software with four different, we'll call them channels. You're gonna have your mic, your chat, music, and system. That's the four default ones that are shown to you. And then as you can see, I have already selected my microphone here because I needed to record this video and there would be no microphone sound if I did not actually select my microphone here. So your microphone will not be selected. You will need to select your microphone out of this list. You can see I have microphone NVIDIA selected, uh, but whatever your microphone is, whatever it says, that's the one that you're gonna want to use or whatever. First things first, a couple things in the Beacon software. Over here on the left side of the Beacon software, you have kind of your sliders, which is this page, which has all of your different channels, as well as your personal mix, your audience mix, and your routing table, which we'll get into all that as we go. You also have this gear icon, which is just your settings tab, basically. You can name your device. Mine just is the default Beacon Mix Create 1. Here you can also update your firmware version. Normally it tells you your firmware version. Also shows you the app version that you're using, all of that. You can select whether you want the Beacon app to start on Windows Startup, as well as if you want it to open to the Windows tray instead of opening up to your desktop. And then you can also opt into public beta releases, which if you're streaming and stuff might not be the best idea. I do it because obviously, you know, I do videos on helping streamers and stuff. So getting access to the latest features and stuff is a win for me since this is kind of what I do. And then, you know, that's basically it. So we'll go back to our slider tabs. Over here on the left side, you have the name of whatever you name your device. For me, the default Beacon Mix Create 1. Then you have this plus icon, which allows you to add a new profile, which if we do that, you can see that that creates a new profile for you, which again, just gives you these four default, because this is a new profile here that we're working with. And then if you hover over any of your profiles, you'll see a save button, a duplicate button, and a trash button. So we're gonna delete that one that I just made. Anytime you make changes in this, it doesn't get saved automatically. Always make sure you hit that save button whenever you make any changes inside of the Beacon software or with anything. And that's basically it for that. Let's go ahead and start actually setting up the software and how we would do that and everything we need to do inside of that. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do once we have the Beacon software installed is we need to set up Windows. So what Beacon software does is when it installs, it creates a bunch of virtual audio devices on your PC. What you're gonna wanna do is right click on your little sound icon in the bottom of your taskbar here and click on sound settings. And you're gonna see you have your outputs, you have your inputs, but we actually wanna scroll down to the advanced tab and find more sound settings because we want this box open, which you may be familiar with. If you're on Windows 10 or earlier, Windows 7, Windows 8.1, whatever, you should just be able to open this directly from your bottom taskbar here, instead of having to go through the sound settings and everything like you now have to do in Windows 11. So once we have this open, we have our playback tab, our recording tab, our sounds and our communication. And what we wanna do is set our default devices so that they go through the Beacon software. And again, you can see here all of these like RCA jacks 
Those are all of the virtual devices that Beacon added. And you can see we have like Ox1, Ox2, browser, chat, clock source, game, etc. And then if we scroll down, you can see all of your normal devices. Like for example, here is my normal headphones that I'm wearing right now. They're Realtek HD audio second output. Normally that would be what my default devices would be. But what we wanna change them to, and again, I've already done this because in order for me to be able to record right now, my microphone to be working and all that, I had to have this set up. You're gonna find the one that says chat and you're gonna to wanna to set that as your default communication device. So you can click down here, this little down arrow and select default communication device. You don't wanna set it to default device. You just wanna set it to default communication device. And then you're gonna to wanna to find your system beacon mix crate and set that to your default device. So system gets set to default device and chat gets sent to default communications device. The reason that you wanna do this is you want all of your catch-all sounds to come through your system, and that's why we set it as the default. Just like if you were to set your headphones or whatever, then any sounds on your computer come through your headphones. Now any sounds that come through your computer system come through this system channel, which you can see we have here inside the Beacon software, it's this green channel. The reason that we set our default communication device to chat is because now whenever we open any program inside of Windows that Windows deems as a communication program, Discord, Skype, Zoom, any type of software like that, Windows is automatically going to recognize that that's a communication device. And so it's going to send the output for that device instead of through the normal system channel here, which is this green one, it's going to send it automatically to this chat channel here, which is this like light, you know, this ice blue, this light blue color. And it's going to automatically do that for you so that you don't have to go into each of those programs. Again, Discord, Skype, any type of software like that, Zoom, and change the output device to your chat device that Beacon Mix Crate has made for you to that audio channel. Instead, it should do that automatically. Occasionally, you might download a program where it doesn't do that and you will still need to go in and set it to be the, with the chat program. If it's a chat program that you're wanting to control separately from like your system audio or your mic or your music or whatever. But again, this should do most of it. Now, if we go to our recording tab, we have this voice chat mic that Beacon Mix Crate created for us. And normally we would have our microphone selected in here as our default, but we do this voice chat mic because then that does this channel here so that whenever we do any adjustments like change the volume up or down, uh, that all gets sent through this voice chat mic and it also lets us do stuff down in our routing table, which again, we will get to at some point. So we just wanna make sure that this is set to both our default device as well as our default communications device. Once we have that done, you can click apply, you can click okay. We're done inside of Windows. Everything that we need to set up in Windows is done. So everything going forward is gonna be inside of Beacon and then inside of OBS once we have Beacon set up. Let's dive into the Beacon software. First things you're gonna to wanna to do in here, like I said, you wanna set your microphone if you haven't already. It's not set by default, you'll just see a list down here and you just wanna select which one you wanna use. If you have multiple mics, you can select multiple mics. I don't know why you would have multiple mics, but if you do, you can select multiple mics here. By default, so you'll notice here you have two different sliders and one of them is highlighted in blue and the other one is not. So the first slider is your personal mix, which we can see right here. And we have two different, it says select a list of the device. We have two different drop down boxes. We also have a slider here. And then we have the right one, which is our audience mix, which is over here on the right side. And so we can actually switch between, well actually I'll show that to you guys later, but we can switch which one we're currently listening to, actually on, actually I'll show you guys now, on the Beacon Mix Create itself, this button all the way on the right below your two arrows, if we press that, we switch between the, you can see the blue bar here change, and you can also see the gray around this uh, audience mix changed. Again, I'll switch back just to show you. So boom, this change as well as the background to the personal mix. Let's do it again, it switched to the audience side as well as you know the, the audience mix here. And so what this allows you to do, this button, is it allows you to either A, listen to your own personal mix, like maybe you don't have music in your own personal mix, maybe you don't have different things in your own personal mix, or maybe you just have different settings, like maybe you have music turned up louder for your audience mix, 
but you have it turned down more for yourself, this lets you listen to the two different mixes, your own personal mix or what your audience hears. That's what these two sliders are. Your left one is your personal mix, your right one is the audience mix, and by default, your mic is gonna be turned off in the personal mix, that way you don't hear yourself talking in your headphones because there's a delay, a little bit of a delay. It's just not a good thing. So by default, they have it turned off in your personal mix, as you can see here, and they also have it muted in your personal mix, as you can see here. Once you have your microphone select, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our devices under the personal mix. So the first device you're gonna to wanna to choose is whatever device is your main device. So for me, again, that's this Realtek HD audio second output. You can also select a secondary device. So let's say, for example, I have speakers on my desktop and I wanna select those. I can select right here, speakers, Realtek audio. That is my desktop speakers. And what that allows me to do is you see this little you know, slider here to the right of those allows me to switch between the two. You can see the blue changes and let me turn up the volume of the speakers. You can see the blue highlight changes depending on whether that's up or down. And so right now, the personal mix will be coming through my headphones. If I bring it down here, it'll be coming through my desktop speakers. You can also switch this. Let me move my mouse out of the way so you can see I'm not doing my with my mouse. You can also switch this by long pressing any of the knobs on your Beacon Mix tray. So if I press and hold, you can see that that changes. So I can switch without having to have the software open. I can switch between my headphones and my desktop speakers now just by pressing it and holding down on any of the knobs. And again, it doesn't matter which knob I use. We'll go to the third one here. You can see it switch in here inside of the Beacon Mix software. And you can see I'm pressing the third knob, long pressing the third knob. So that's how we set up our devices for our personal mix. Again, you can have two set up, which is nice. That way you don't have to be swapping stuff around. You can just, again, do either one of those to change it. And then over here, you can see we have our audience mix. So our audience mix, we can change this, but we want to leave it to audience mix. Why? Because this is the mix that we're gonna use inside of our streaming program. So like Streamlabs OVS, whatever program you're using to stream, you're gonna to wanna to select to be your microphone, the audience mix, because this is what they're gonna hear, whether you have your music turned up or down, whether you mute your music, whether you mute your chat, that's all gonna get sent out to the audience mix, because again, we have this right slider here, which is our audience mix, and that's what they're gonna hear. And so that's all this is right here, is just your audience mix for those programs. Down here in the routing table, what this is, as you can see, you have a personal mix, an audience mix, a voice chat mic, and a VOD track. What these are is this allows you to select or deselect, so basically turn on or turn off, any of the channels that we have added here in the Beacon software. For our personal mix, we have our chat turned on, we have music turned on, and we have our system sounds turned on, which is basically everything else outside of our music chat or our microphone. You can turn any of these on or off just by select, you know, just by clicking on it down here in the routing table. And then you can also see here we have audience mix, which again is this mix that goes out to your live stream. Let's say that we don't want any of our music going to our live stream. We can click this button and mute it to our live stream, turn it off to our live stream. That way maybe you're listening to copyrighted music. You don't want that to go out to your live stream. You can have it turned off in here. You could also mute it if you wanted just on the audience mix side, but if you wanna make sure it doesn't go out, you can just turn it off completely in this routing table, which is nice. And again, you can do that for anything. So voice chat mic, if you remember in Windows under our recording devices, we set our default device as well as our default communications device to this voice chat mic. And the reason we did that is because now inside of Discord or any program with our microphone, we would select our voice chat mic and that would be what is being sent out to like Discord or anything. And the reason we do that is because if we mute our microphone using the Beacon Mix Create, it'll mute us inside of Discord, Skype, Zoom, whatever as well without us having to also mute ourselves inside of that program. The other cool thing you can do is again with this routing table, let's say we're listening to music and we wanna send it through our Discord or send it through our Skype, we can just turn it on and now our music is going through our microphone inside Discord just like anything else. So instead of using like a music bot or anything like that, that sometimes is laggy, sometimes doesn't work properly. I mean, basically you can send anything through the voice chat mic. The VOD track is created for 
when you're streaming in your software like OBS, Streamlabs, OBS, you're streaming, but you're also recording the file as you're streaming to like your local hard drive, you could set that recorded file to a VOD track. And for example, you can have the music turned off, which means it'll capture everything except the music. That way, when you use that video file later to edit inside of Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, whatever, there won't be music on that audio track because a lot of times you end up cutting up a video file and stuff if you're editing it. And then that cuts up the music and stuff that might have been there from the live stream and you don't really want that because then it sounds funny. So instead you can just not have music at all and you can add music in later after you're done editing everything. Or maybe you don't have your microphone come through the VOD track because you want your microphone on a separate track inside of OBS or Streamlabs OBS. That way you can adjust those separately in case your voice is too quiet or too loud. Whatever the case may be, that's what this extra VOD track is for. And this is a, one of the new things they added in the software since it has released. And a lot of the tutorials don't show you anything with that, which again, I'll show you guys in OBS how to set all of this up as well. We'll get into that. That is your personal mix, your audience mix, all of your routing table and how it works and then your audio ch audio channels. And then what we can do now is we can also add in, you can see a plus sign here. We can actually add in additional audio channels. So you can see we can add in game. Uh, these ones are already added, so they're grayed out, but we can add in game, browser, aux one, aux two, and hardware. So let's go ahead and add in game because we'll use that. And let's go ahead and add in browser because we'll use that. For example, I'm gonna open up Brave here. So we now have Brave open. I'm gonna go to YouTube here. And we're on my channel and I'm gonna load up a video here, one of my last vlogs or whatever. You can see, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it way down just a little bit here. But we're gonna go ahead and play this. So you can see that showed up under browser. Now for you, it would probably show up under your system, which is your default catch-all. But because I've already used Beacon, I've already set Brave to use the browser channel. So the way that you do this, the way that you set up channels is up here at the top right of the Beacon software, we have this sliders icon, but instead of it being up and down like over here, it's left and right. We can click that, which automatically opens up the Windows Volume Mixer. And you can see any app that we currently have open is listed here. And there's this down arrow next to the volume that we can click on. We can select an output device for that. This would have been under system by normal. So you can see it would pop up here under the system icon. So when you first do it, that's where it'll show up for you. But you can come in here and you can change it from default or system to browser. Beacon Mix Create, which is that browser channel. Every time you load up, load up Brave, like it did for me, it'll come through this browser. That way you can independently adjust the volume of your browser inside of, with your Beacon Mix Create using either, you know, the sliders here or using the arrows here to go over to our browser and spin the knob up and down, as you can see it going up and down the volume or lower here with the knob itself on the Beacon Mix Create. That's a really, really cool feature of the Beacon Mix Create and that's exactly why you bought the device and want to use the device. So we also have Aux 1 and Aux 2, which are just two additional channels you can use for whatever that they've added because you can't rename these for whatever, which is kind of stupid. I wish they'd change that, but currently there's no way to rename these. They just are what they are. You also have this hardware tab, which I'm going to mute for us because it'll make it come through double. Uh, but you can also use this hardware tab to select a second microphone if you wanted, or a second input device instead of all these which are outputs. So you set all your outputs to these and then your mic's an input one and this hardware's an input one. Let's say you're a streamer that streams with either your kid or your spouse or whatever. When I stream with my wife, I have this microphone, an Audio-Technica AT2035 that I use for myself. When I have my wife, I have another one of these microphones that I have on a boom stand set up for her. You can have it set up so that her microphone is also coming in and you can then control her microphone level separately from your microphone level. Another use for this would be if you wanted to have a second microphone set up, like for example, when I stream with VR content, virtual reality content. So I use a lavalier microphone that I could have set up as a second one for this hardware one if I wanted. So that's just a couple of use cases uh, to show you. Also, in order to, we showed how to add different channels. In order to delete them, next to the name on the right side, you have this little down arrow. We would simply click that and click the delete knob, and that gets rid of it. And again, you can see it disappeared from the routing table 
down here. I'm not gonna bring up aux one or aux two, those are just extra output ones. So let's say that you want to adjust your music volume. You can see here that we can adjust it by moving these sliders up or down, or down here on the Beacon Mix Create, we can adjust it by spinning this knob clockwise or counterclockwise. But you notice that as I adjust this, both sliders move at the exact same percentage. So let's say you want to adjust your audience volume separately from your personal mix. How do you do that? Well, you see this little chain icon right below them. If you unlink them, now whatever mix you're currently on, so again, we have this blue bar here and we have this gray box that tells us we're on our personal mix. Now, if I adjust this, only it moves. And if I adjust it on the Beacon Mix Create, again, only the personal mix uses. And then if I hit this button that I told you to switch between the personal mix to the audience mix, like this, and now I move the music up and down with the knob. You can see it goes up and down. Another cool feature is, let's say I wanna have my music set to, let's say I want it low for me, so I want it set to 30, and I wanna set it on the audience side to let's say 50. I can adjust each one so that it is now 30 on the personal side and 50 on the audience side, and then what I can do is I can relink it down here. And now if I adjust the slider again, using either my mouse in here or down here on the beacon mix crate with the knob, you can see that they stay relative in loudness or in volume to each other. If I go all the way down though, you can see that I can also make the audience go all the way down. If I go all the way up, you can see I can still, once I hit the max on the audience side, I can keep going up on the personal mix side. And as you can see, as I start going down, the, the audience doesn't go down until I get back to the relative starting point there. So just a really cool feature as well that you can link this and unlink the different mixes. So next things next, as you can see down here under, uh, at the bottom of our, our channels, we have, it says knob mute to all, and then it says here, mute to audience, and it has a drop down box, which when we click it, has mute to all, mute to audience, or mute to chat. So what this allows you to do is, as I said on the Beacon Mix Crate, if we long press, it switches our personal mix between our two different devices. For me, my headphones and my desktop speakers. For you, whatever it is that you selected in the two drop-down boxes. If I short press the knob, it'll mute to all. So for example, I'll do it with the music here. If I short press, now if I was playing music, it gets muted both to my personal mix as well as my audience mix. Any of them that it is going to, mute to all will mute to everything, even though it only shows muted here for your personal mix and for your audience mix. On the Beacon Mix Crate, it'll change the volume level to the speaker icon with a slash to it, and it'll be red, as you can see here on the Beacon Mix Crate. If I short press it again, I unmute to all. Uh, and then the bottom one here is the lighted icon, the different colors that we have down here on the Beacon and mix create. So for music, that is like a purple color. So I can change this. Let's say I have it set right now to mute the audience. If I press this, it only mutes the audience, but everybody else stays unmuted. So what this is useful for is let's say I'm playing a game like, you know, Apex Legends, for example, and I'm with a team and we're going through killing each other and I end up dying. I'm now dead. I'm watching my team continue the match because they're still alive. And I want to chat to my to my audience. Instead of muting to all, I can hit this button down here. I'm now muted to chat, which is this voice chat mic, but only on the chat channel. So only in Discord, Zoom, Skype, again, whatever you're using for your chat, it mutes me to them. So now my audience can still hear me. I can chat to my stream. If people in Discord say something that they need me, I don't gotta pull up Discord separately. I don't gotta like alt tab out of my game to mute or unmute or whatever. So now that we have all of that set up, and we have all of that selected, kind of give you guys what we're doing there. We're gonna to wanna to move into OBS. Uh, one other thing though, actually, before I move on that I wanna mention, two, two small things actually that I forgot. You can change the color of any of these buttons. So up here underneath the name, you have the colors. Also on your Beacon Mix Create, you see the colors underneath the name as well as that's what color the button is. You can change those by right clicking on the color and you can literally set it to any hex value that you want. 
and it'll adjust it on the screen. So like, you know, let's say for example, I normally like setting my mic to white. So we can change that to white. It is now white here in the Beacon software. The button is now white underneath my knob as well as the line underneath the name on the screen of my Beacon Mix Create. And then also down here under the voice chat mic, this drop down box, you can actually copy this chat mic output, which would be your microphone and I guess whatever else you select to another output. This is useful, let's say again, you're dual streaming with somebody and let's say you have two headphones plugged into your computer and you want the person wearing you know, another pair of headphones next to you, they want to be able to hear your voice mic inside their headphones. You could copy this voice chat mic to that secondary output so that it also goes into the headphones of whoever's sitting next to you, which is kind of nice as well. And then also, last thing to note on the Beacon Mix Create, I guess I didn't mention it, but real quick, you only see four channels at a time on the Beacon Mix Create because there's only four knobs, there's only four buttons. And then you have the arrows on the right side above that personal mix audience mix button. You have two arrows that just let you slide between them. And as you slide, you'll see the colors on the bottom change to whatever the colors are represented here, as well as the names and the volume levels and all of that change as you do it. It moves completely over four at a time. So so if you had eight different ones, for example, and you hit the over button, you would go from seeing the first four to seeing the second set of four. Like it doesn't move one at a time, it moves four at a time. So if you wanna keep, for example, your microphone always first, no matter where you move, you can actually lock any of these using the lock icon up here to the screen. And now if I press over, it'll only move three over. So it'll move from chat music system. If I pressed over, it would move, mic would stay and it would have game browser and maybe aux one or whatever. So whatever my last three are. All right, so let's go ahead and move into OBS and how to set it up inside of there. What you're gonna to wanna to do is when you open up OBS, you're gonna to wanna to go into your settings. Again, this is the same as Streamlabs and you're gonna to wanna to go to your audio tab. Now your desktop audio where you would normally select like your main device, like your headphones or whatever, we're gonna disable. Same with desktop audio too. And we're gonna do our mic and we wanna set our microphone instead of to our normal microphone, which for me would be this analog one plus two, it would now be audience mix for the Beacon Mix Crate. Because again, that's then gonna use whatever we have our audience mix set to and all the different levels we have set for our audience mix. That mix is now what our audience is gonna hear. Our secondary mic auxiliary, we're gonna wanna set to that VOD track. That's gonna be for our recorded file whenever, you know, when we set that up. And then that's all we're gonna set up inside of the audio, which when we do that, you're gonna now see them under your audio mixer as Beacon Mix and VOD Track. And you can right click these and rename them. So you could rename this Audience Mix if you want to, or you could just name it Beacon, whatever. So now once we have those added in, what we can do is if we go back into our settings and we go to our output, you can see here that we can have for our streaming, Audio Track 1. So whatever is set to Audio Track 1 in our audio properties, that is what our live stream is going to hear. In our recording tab, we can select audio tracks and whatever is on that audio track is what is gonna get saved with our recorded video file. So you can see here we have audio track one for our streaming, we have audio track two for our recording. And then where we can set this is if we go back to our main you know, screen here and go to our CR audio mixer and click on any of these gear icons, we have this advanced audio properties. We can also get to it from the edit button up here in the top left of OBS, advanced audio properties. We have our beacon mix and we have our VOD track. So our beacon mix goes, we have it selected for track one, which would be what our live stream hears. And we have our VOD track set to uh, track two, which is what gets saved with our video file, our recorded file to our hard drive. But then you can actually go further if you wanted. Let's say that you wanna also have on your recorded file, you wanna use track three, four, five, and six to separate things even further. That way, let's say you pull the video file into Premiere or DaVinci Resolve and you start playing it and you notice in the VOD track, your voice is too high, your teammates' voices are too low, the game volume's overpowering. And you know now that everything is in that one track, you, could, you can't go in and like Premiere and you can't raise your microphone or, you know, or lower your microphone and then raise or lower your, your chats you know, which like your Discord or your Skype or your Zoom, you can't do that because it's already all mixed and recorded onto one track. But what we can do 
is we can go ahead and select, well, actually we want to select it here, but we can go ahead and go back into our settings, go to our output recording tab, and we can select to also save track three, four, five, and six to our recorded file. We can hit apply, okay. And now whatever we set to those tracks will get set as separate audio tracks inside Premiere. So when we pull the recorded video file into Adobe Premiere, again, or DaVinci Resolve or whatever, instead of it having one audio track, it'll now have five audio tracks because we have audio track two, three, four, five, and six selected. Audio track one we're using for the stream. So when we pull it in, we'll have five audio tracks inside of Premiere or whatever that we can use. So what we can do is inside our sources, we could add audio input or audio output capture. We'll name it, we'll name it Discord. We'll hit okay. And now we can go down here and we can select chat beacon mix crate, hit okay. And we now are capturing our Discord uh, separately inside this source. We could also do that, for example, let's say we wanna select just our microphone. So microphone we could do, and we can select in here, our microphone, which would be voice chat mic in the beacon mix crate and hit okay. But basically you're gonna add them and you wanna make sure they're added into each source that you're gonna want those in. Now, if we go back to the advanced audio properties, you can see we have a lot more options here. We have now all that browser to, microphone to, system to, Discord, and we can select those. So for example, let me turn them off on everything first to make it easier for us to tell what we're doing here. So again, we have our Beacon Mix going to one. We have our VOD track going to two. So all these other ones we wanna turn off on system one or on track one. So the browser, all of those. So we have just the Beacon Mix on track one, just the VOD track on track two. And then what we can do is we can put our microphone on track three, we could put our Discord on track four, we could put our browser on track five, and we could put our system on track six. Now, when we load this video, our recorded video file into Adobe Premiere, we can adjust if this VOD track mix isn't how exactly we want it, we could delete track two in Adobe Premiere and use tracks three, four, five, and six, and adjust all of those levels independently from each other to create a new sub mix in post-processing that might be better suited for exactly what you need. You're limited to kind of four remaining tracks that you can use to do all this. So you might have to double up on some things, but again, it just shows you what you can do inside of OBS using Beacon Mix Crate and all of these different sources and stuff. That's all I got for you guys. That's what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, hopefully this video helped you out. It's, I, I wanted to be very thorough and show you guys exactly how to set everything up inside Windows, the Beacon software, as well as OBS, some of the cool things you can do, like all these different mixes and stuff, and just really show you guys how to use this to your advantage. So I hope this video helped you out. Again, if it did, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Also, like I said, leave a comment. If you got a question, if there's some other cool things you know how to do with the Beacon software and stuff, go ahead and throw that in the comment below. Let us know. I'm always looking for new ways of doing things. If you have no question, if you have no feedback to add, just say hello, leave an emoji, something. Engage with the video a little bit. It helps us out tremendously. If you watched this long, the video obviously helped you out. You found it useful. Please consider doing that. It really helps me out. Love your faces. I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace out, everybody. Later, nerds.